And they're like, um, we got the biopsy results. It's cancerous. And they're about to foreclose on my house. And I'm like, yo, what am I going to do? So I had to shut the store down. In terms of collabs, Sneaker Room has one door. We're 22 collabs in. I'm not known as Siraj Sneaker Room. Mm -hmm. It's Siraj the Philanthropist. Mm -hmm. What really is success? Right. Is it how much money you have? Is it what car you drive? Is it is it, you know, the clothes that you have? Is it this like, no man, success is love. And my son goes, Dad, Dad. I like to let everybody introduce themselves how they would like to be seen into the world. So okay. go ahead, let them know who you are, and then we'll talk about a couple accolades. Siraj Kaufman, you know, everybody knows me as Sneaker Room, but I like to be known as a philanthropist. Mm -hmm. I'm a dude that came from nothing, made a little something, but then decided to give a little something mm -hmm. or give a little lot. Yeah, give a little lot, give a little lot. Like that's a new word. Give I'm a whole give a lot. lot. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I'm just I'm just a regular dude, a father. A philanthropist, a mentor, someone who just wants to leave a legacy and leave something in this world. I feel that. Okay, so you've had collaborations with all your collaborations with Nike yeah. only? Yes, Nike Okay, so only. you got uh, sportswear designs, you got basketball designs. Yes. We'll talk about that in a yes. bit. And then you have your store. How many years have your store been open? Whew, I mean, we started in 06 as a resale store. Okay. Then closed down, then reopened. So, I mean, if you want to go longevity-wise... We've been in the game for 17 years. Okay. If you want to go as sneaker room wise, it's about 12, 13 years. Out of New York. In Jersey. Oh, Come Jersey. On. Get, get yeah, it right, yeah. D. Get it get right, right, D. Get it right. Oh, I'm on the man. West Coast. Here we go. Yo, so I still got to represent out here, man. See? <laughs> all right, let's okay. do it. All right, so we're going to talk about all that. But like you said, came a long way. You got a lot to offer. You have offered a lot. And I always like to take it back. Paint that picture for me. What was it like, that grade school, middle school era, uh, family lifestyle, finances? What did okay. you know about finances? Oh, wow, okay. Oh, and, wow. You going in. Okay. Yeah. This is I want to know, like, you know, what was your, you okay. know, how was your foundation built, um, learning okay. those things? And right. then, obviously, yeah, we'll talk about sneakers as well. Oh, no, I like this. Right, let's go. Let's, let, listen, this is the part that people don't want to ever hear about. Mm -hmm. They just want to see what they see today. Right. They don't realize what it was before this. Yeah, I need the like, root. Okay. I need the All root. Right. So, let's see. Grew up in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. Born and raised. Lived in the projects, Marion Projects, 37 Dales Avenue, apartment 625. Lived in the PJs. Listen, man, made me who I am. Mm -hmm. uh, what made young Siraj fall in love with uh, Nike or Jordan, if you want to say, was back when the brands did their thing and they told stories. Mm -hmm. So 92, you know what I'm saying? You know, Jordan 7 Bordeaux, Michael Jordan. Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? We're not going to talk about a funny story to that happened at Jordan Brand with my son not, you know, trying to correct me when I said Michael Jackson, thinking I'm talking about Jordan, but I'm really talking about Jackson. Right. You had and the three mics in that era, that's, too. That's, Mike Tyson, Exactly. Too. I mean, it was, it was a good time. It, this I mean, I was, I was one year old, but. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I do remember that era. <laughs> All right. uh, it's cool. I was, the listen, back. I was 12, so I wasn't that much older than Okay, you. okay. But basically, I went to my mother, God rest her soul, in the projects, and I was like, yo, ma, I need these shoes. I need these shoes. And she's like, all right, how much are they? Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm thinking I'm getting them. I'm like, ma, they're like 120, 130. And she's like, MF, you know I rent this 110, you do the math. And right. I'm like, didn't get the shoes. Right. That's it. That was that's my story. Like everybody has a story. Right. So with that being said, I always wanted shoes still because shoes have always been a staple. They've always been uh it's not, it's like, it's not that it's respect, but if you had them, like people just nod your head when you walk by. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, yeah. Like, you know, they right. know. You know. Right. So I never had that. Mm -hmm. So growing up, didn't have that. Um, even, you know, going further, you know, listen, I, I, I had my first son at 19. My wife was 18. We started mm -hmm. very young. Um, I don't have a college degree. I only have a high school diploma. Um, and basically, you know, I was working regular jobs just trying to pay for the, pay for my kids to grow Well, my kid at that time, my first son to grow up. And, you know, here and there, I would buy a shoe. You know, I started working at a trucking company, dispatch manager, a water company, just trying to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And I would buy a shoe here or there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, circle back to 2005, uh, wifey's pregnant with our second child and she, she gets sick and, um, you know, she's in the hospital and she needs some help. And, you know, I mean, listen, she had a stroke, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It was crazy. We was about to lose our second child. And if I start crying, D, I'm going to tell you, yo, you ain't have no, you ain't That's have all I'm here for. You ain't, no, it's not, man. It's not you, ratings, man. but. I'm here for you. And, and she got sick and, you know, listen, I thought, you know, wifey was paralyzed, half her body for a minute. So I thought life was about to end. So I took what's called the family, um, the family act. Where you could take time off for work to deal with your family okay. and, you know, they hold your job. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking they held my job. Right. Okay. So, so circle, ba circle back February. My second son is born. This is February of 2006. And I'm like, all right, cool bet. You know, like after he's born, February 4th, I'm like, all right, I'm going back to work like on the 14th. When I go back, they're like, yo, we eliminated your position. Right. And I'm like, what? Like, 
Huh. I got like two two grand in the bank. Right. I'm like, what the hell I'm about to do? Right. Newborn, six year old, you know, like yeah. sneakers are not even in, in, in the midst of what I'm thinking about. So then circle back, well not circle forward, uh February twentieth. Um February 20th is the night before my birthday. Mm -hmm. So mom's telling me that she's going, she went to the dentist last week and she's like, I got a cyst in my mouth. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'm waiting for the results. So I'm like, all right, next day, February 21st, which is my birthday. I'm sitting there, we're having dinner at my house, my mom, my dad, you know, my two kids. And she gets the phone call, like, we got your results. You need to come in now. Mm -hmm. So we go and we we go to the, you know, the dentist's office. Now, mind you, I don't even celebrate my birthday because circle back to 98, my brother passed away February 20th. 11.58 p.m., two minutes before my birthday. Damn. Right before I turned 18, I lost my big brother. Okay. Ten-year difference. So, like, I never celebrate my birthday usually. It's just in the house, you know, family. So we go to the dentist's office. Doctor comes in. Like, three nurses come in. Like, you know, there's not nurses, but dental assistants. Mm -hmm. And they're like, um, we got the biopsy results. It's cancerous. Hmm. Um, we're not sure what type of cancer is, but it doesn't come from the mouth. So you need to get to a doctor right away. You're right. Boom, next day we're at the hospital, getting the PET scan, find out it's colon cancer. So I'm like, all right. Like, and I'm telling this story because this is where the leads into sneakers. Mm -hmm. So we find out she's got colon cancer. And then, you know, getting laid off or you want to say they closed my job was the best thing that ever happened to me because I got to spend the next three months with my mother mm -hmm. in my house with hospice before she went. Talk about that before you go. It ain't okay. Those moments, those times. My grandpa just passed away. Okay. And the last, like, I remember those times, like, going to Palm Springs and just, like, I'm on the move. You like, you know me, I'm traveling, yeah. I'm doing all these things. But like over these past few years, I'm like, whenever I get the chance, if I can go for the weekend and you yes. know, kick it with them, you know, he loves hot air balloons, yes. he loves to do these things, want to get on the tram and go have it lunch listen, or whatever. Listen, we don't realize like how like how short life is. Right. We don't realize that I'm seeing you today, I might not see you tomorrow. Right. Like that's what people don't understand about like this sneaker thing is great. This culture is phenomenal. But we still got to understand that the word life is before all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's what people forget. Mm -hmm. Like, think about it. Like, I'm telling you that my, my son is born. I'm in a happy moment. I lost my job. I find out my mom got cancer. Like, what's going on in my life? Mm -hmm. So then forward, mom passes away May 25th, 2006. So I'm all messed up in the head. I'm not going to lie to you, man. I got a newborn. I'm trying to figure out life. I don't have a job, whatever. So boom, sitting in the house one day, box comes in the mail. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, let's go. And this is a story that we never, like we talk about it at Sneaker Room, but we don't really tell it to the public too much mm -hmm. because, you know, it's like if you come in and you talk to us, you'll know. Right. So I open up the box. It's one piece of Nike stock and it's the actual stock. Right. And it's framed. Uh -huh. And the inscription says on the little metal gold tag, to Siraj, a piece of Nike you won't wear out. Love mom. Mm. My brother, I'm like, what do you do? Right. I go to my dad. He didn't know nothing about it. Go to my aunt. And she's like, your mom knew you love shoes so much she wanted to leave you something. Mm -hmm. And that's what she left me. Mm -hmm. So like I have that on my arm tattooed. I never would put a company's name on my arm. Right. But Nike's on my arm. This is way before an account, way before anything. Right. Just because that's what my mother wrote. Mm -hmm. So then boom, I'm like, all right, got to do something now. So now mind you, 2006, the resale game ain't crazy. Right. Like, you know, you know this. Oh yeah, this is, <laughs> this, this, this is, okay. <laughs> yeah. So before we move too fast, before we move too fast, <laughs> right, before we move too fast. Good. High school. You know, give me the Siraj in high school. You know, was you one of the homies I would have been kicking away back in the day? Like, what's up? I like, wasn't, was not, going I wasn't into shoes because I really couldn't afford shoes. Okay. You know, I had here and there. Like, I remember I got my I got my uh, my patent leather bread 11s. Mm -hmm. A lot of people didn't know JC Penny sold during the back in the day. Yes. Okay. No. Oh, 2001. That's you. Or are you talking about the original? <laughs> Go back. Go okay. back. Go okay. back. I didn't know if you were saying. No, I remember. Oh, wait. You remember the age difference? Yeah, yeah right, not two thousand. Right, remember right, the age okay. difference? That's you, two thousand one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm prior. Yeah. So I got them from J C Penney's because I took my dad's credit card and charged them without him knowing. <laughs> so like I took his J C Penney's card and got them because okay. they didn't ask me for ID. No so, like, kids. Yeah, so. How to get sneakers at a young age? <laughs> so you don't do it now. <laughs> like don't do, don't do it now. Like my son is over here. He's watching us. He's like, yo, yeah. I got dad's address like, in the wallet. Like, like, this. I like no, this. but like you know, like that's what I that's what high school was. Mm -hmm. High school, like listen, man. If you knew me growing up, to be very honest with you, I'm not the same person I was. I was a uh, very quite, quite honestly, a very stupid, ignorant child. Mm -hmm. Like I really, you know, like listen, I'm I'm half white, and I'm half Indian. Okay. And I ignored that for a long time because I grew up in the projects, and I didn't really even look at what race I was. Right. But I never took like my dad's Hindu culture. I wanted to learn about it. Mm. Like he would invite me to go to India and I've only been to India once. I think it was the last time I was there. Well, I've been there now, but the last time I was there, I think I was 
13 years old or 12 years old. Mm. And then like, you know, I didn't go. And I'm like, because I didn't want to. It's like, oh, that's a family that I don't know. Right. It's right. like a family you don't, you know, you don't talk to every day. So out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. Again, circle back now. And I'm like, whoa, like I have family on another side of the country. Mm -hmm. Like not even the country, the world. The world, yeah. So I'm like, I want to know them. I want to see them. I want to know what's going on. Like, that's why when I go to schools and I talk to a lot of kids at schools and I do a lot of mentoring, I'm always about them about like, yo, knowing who your family is, supporting your family. Even if you got it rough, you still got a family. Mm -hmm. Like it's that aspect. Like even with my staff, like my staff is my family. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's, that's straight up. Like they know, like you might be my little brother. You might be the one that's like my son. You know, like I have different in my, in my, in my, in my, in my family, I have two sons. I have a wife, mm -hmm. you know, in my store, I have two little brothers. I have a little son. I have a grumpy old uncle, mm -hmm. you know, you know what I'm saying? Like I have a family. So like, that's what we do. You know what I mean? And that's what people forget because I'm so happy, man. Like now I'm, I'm really happy about this because this is not your normal podcast and I've done other podcasts. There's no, 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 no shout outs or nothing, but I've done them even on networks mm -hmm. and it's never been about this. It's right. always been about the shoe. Right. It's always been about that. It's always been about that instant moment. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like this. So listen, I don't know if you would have liked me, D, when I was growing up and I was in high school. I'm going to be honest. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if we would have been friends. I don't know if you would have liked me. I'm not going to hey. lie because I wasn't, I wasn't the easiest person. I didn't go to the most hood school, but I was definitely in the mix. Yeah. So I grew up in the... Rough you gotta remember when we were, when when I was growing up, there was no social media. Right. There was no cell phones. Had, really for me, it was like we, just we, we were lucky if we had a pager. Right. Like you know, we got a beep when we was running to the payphone right. trying to call you back. So it was different times. So I think that also goes to be like how I was growing up or who I was growing up. Mm -hmm. The times have changed. Mm -hmm. Like now it's different. So now we go back. Okay, we back in 2006. Got the stock in the mail. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, I want to do sneakers. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, right, let's do sneakers. So I go to my dad and I'm like, yo, dad, I need you to help me. I'm like, didn't go to college, didn't have this. I'm like, I need some money to open up a store. Okay. And what was your dad doing? As you uh, my dad, up? my dad always dibbled and dabbled. Like he was in real estate, but like real talk and, and God rest his soul because he passed away last October. We just celebrated his one year heavenly anniversary. He was just one of those people that he was always working mm -hmm. and he just never made it. Mm. Like he, he worked hard all his life. Mm -hmm. Like my dad was one of those people that, you know, a lot of people say you never get a break. My dad never got a break. Like, uh, I think I, <clears throat> I don't know how to explain it from your perspective because I didn't experience your whole life or yeah. anything, but I, I talked to my dad about that and he's always like, I'm working my ass off every single day yeah. for you guys. Yeah. And that's what's the most important yeah. thing. It, 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 so everything that he did is you're the reflection of his success, all those things. And nah, just because it I'll wasn't give, I'll give him, you one better. You know what I'm saying? I'm his legacy. Right. Like I, I am him and my kids are my legacy. Like I don't write my, everything that I do, I don't do it for myself. Like, just like you said, I do right. it for my kids. And then because, they, hopefully they think the same way. And they're going to do it to honor my name. And, you know, he never made it. So being that he never made it, like, you know, they we're talking 2006 and he gave me 15 grand mm -hmm. cash. Well, I was going to say cash. He wrote me a check. I think that was a way of trying to get me to pay him back eventually. Yeah. So he writes me a check for yeah, 15 grand. Official. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, all right, let's do this. So I rented a small store. I mean, it was 300 square feet. Like literally my store was the size of the studio that we're sitting in right now recording. Okay. Maybe even a little smaller. The stock room and everything. Everything. 300 square feet total. Sheesh. The bathroom too. Like don't even forget the bathroom. Like <laughs> I'm just- I'm, I'm just, just like, like serving out the basically, window. Basically, <laughs> no, basically I was in the closet, bro. Right. Like, and I put a buzzer on the door, which never worked. And then my security system was my youngest son, Destin, who at that time was like, not even like what I want to say, eight or nine months by the time we opened up. Mm -hmm. And he was in the playpen in the middle of the floor. So I was like, if you're going to steal in front of my kid, man, you a bad person. <laughs> like, you know, so I opened up this store. And the crazy thing is a lot of people never hear the story about where the name came from. Mm -hmm. So when I opened up the store, I had to think of a name. And my mom, when she moved in with us, when we had hospice, we had a three bedroom. Mm -hmm. So one of the bedrooms, we I had my 20 pairs of sneakers in there. Mm -hmm. And it was like my kid's playroom because the kids shared a room. And my mother was like, I'm so sorry I'm taking over your sneaker room. Mm. And that's where the name came from. Because like, let's be real. I'm going to be real. Sneaker room is not the best name. Like, I'm just going to keep it real. But it's I, a cool name. I think it's a good name. But though. I'm just saying like it's not it. the best. There's there's a lot of names that are, are good. But no, no. Just, okay. This is what I'm saying. Okay. I'm just All saying. Right. But it's because it has a meaning. Yeah. It wasn't something that we went and we... Did research on, and we, you know, we did market travel and market right, and right, see right, right. and see who what, what name people want to Google. But that's why there. you're still in the game. So we and opened, they're not. Well, well, this is the but thing. That's a whole we other we topic. were almost not in the game. So 2006, we opened end of 2006, and doing that two years, buying like again there was no resale market. Mm -hmm. Buying a Jordan for 175, 
paying off the manager at the store another 20 bucks. You had taxes out there too? No, we don't have tax out there. Okay, close. So I'm at 195. Okay. But then I'm selling the shoe for 220. Because mm-hmm. that's all it was worth back then. Yeah, it wasn't the crazy <laughs> like, margins like, like, yeah. like, like, you know, like, let's be it real. It like, like that one what, or two releases. Bro, when I was doing that, like, I was selling, like, I had a connect. I'm going to be honest with you. And I was getting SBs. Like, I, bro, I had at the time like 150 pairs of Dooms, 200 pairs of Ferris Bueller's. 2006, 2007. That's what I'm saying. It was the golden, golden era. era. I had ETs and then yeah. they scrapped them. But, but the thing was, it was the golden era, but there was no money on it. We didn't know that. That's though. what I'm saying. Yeah. So it, it wasn't the golden era. It's It would have been the golden era to have them now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm selling these shoes, making 20, 30 bucks. You know, after doing that for two years, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, they about to foreclose on my house. Mm-hmm. You know, I had a small, like a small little three bedroom that me and my wife got lucky and we bought and we put all our money together. And plus, real estate back then was, you know, way a lot cheaper. Mm-hmm. And they about to foreclose on my house. And I'm like, yo, what am I going to do? So I had to shut the store down. Okay. So I shut the store down. And I went to work for another store that's out of business now, but it was called KD's in Jersey City. It was okay. in the hood. It was on Martin Luther King. You know, I was out there. You know what I'm saying? I'm in these streets. <laughs> they had a Nike account. I was doing the buying for them. I was working the store. Like, you know, one of my funniest stories is a dude comes in and back then he's trying on the Omavi jeans. Mm. Okay. And he goes in the fitting room. Right. And all you hear is, whoa. And you see, you see the hole in the wall, in the ceiling. Because when he tried on the jeans, he dropped his gun. Oh like, I'm talking, we was in the hood. Like, I'm just letting you know, we was, we was in the hood. He came out like, I'm good. You know, I'm good. Like, he came out like, everybody all right? Yeah. And I'm over here like, yeah. <laughs> like, where? Uh, and I'm looking at the manager because I'm not even the manager. And I'm like, yo, T, we good? <laughs> you know, so I'm like, you know, you know, so I did that. And then as I'm working there, they opened up a second store and they went into an even, even, uh, even harder area. We went to Nork. Okay. So we in Nork and we, we in, we, we on Clinton Avenue. Okay. So if people out there listening, you from Nork and you know Clinton Avenue, Clinton Avenue's like the wild, wild west. Still the same. Yeah, listen, they built a police station and it's still the same. They said it might have like, got worse. You know what I'm saying? It might have got worse with the police station. Right. Like, to be honest. So went to work over there. But as I was working for them, I started meeting a lot of people from Nike because they had an account. Mm-hmm. And like, I started helping them like do the tastemaker events and stuff like when Nike used to do that back in the day. And with that being said, like one of the dudes was like, yo, you could do this. Like, what you doing here? Right. And I'm telling him my old story. And he's like, yo, you should open up a store. And I'm like, I ain't got the bread. Right. You know what I'm saying? So then I went to one of the homies back then. Um, you know, I was like, yo, I need a partner. Mm-hmm. We partnered up and basically got the Nike account. So we opened up our first store in Montclair, New Jersey. What year was this? This is, wow, where am I? I think it might be 2006, 2000. Yo, I'm bad with numbers. I'm not going to lie to you, but 2006, 2008, 2008, 2008. It was either 2010. Yeah, it was probably like 2010 or 2000. I think it was 2010 to be honest. Don't okay. quote me on it. That that sounds about right because I we met like I think in two thousand eleven. No, I think we met sooner because you met me before I had an account. It might have been like we actually. met at sneaker shows before I had an account when I was just flying around. That the was country. like my senior year. That's right, I think you met me when I actually year. think I had the original sneaker room because that's when I was flying around all the Dunkin' shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was trying to meet people and get connected to my right, sneakers. Right, right, like right. that wasn't when I was doing it. Yeah, I think that was my senior year of high school because I graduated in two thousand ten. So so then it's about right. around so now. about so yeah. then 2010, 2011. Mm-hmm. So we open up the store. We call it Takeover. I mean, we we doing really good. Small store in Montclair, doing really good. Um, we got really lucky. We opened up a second store in Jersey City. Okay. Um, partnerships are hard. I'm not going to throw dirt on nobody. I'm not going to say that because there's nothing like that. We all go through stuff in life, and everything that we go through makes us who we are. Mm-hmm. Me and the, him didn't, the partnership just didn't work out. So he kept, we, we talked about it. He kept the Montclair store. Mm-hmm. It's called Takeover. He kept, you know, the Instagram, everything. And I said, I'm going to go back to Jersey City. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to start over. So I had a Nike account, mm-hmm. but I called it Sneaker Room. Went okay. back to my original name. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Rewind. Yeah. A lot of people out there want to have a store. Yeah. They want to have a Nike account. Yeah. It may be different now. They got yeah. neighborhood accounts. They switched up the names. They've done all these different okay. things. You remember it was the Tier Zero, all the yeah, different Yeah, of course, stuff. of course. Uh, explain to them, what is a Nike account? Explain to them how you went about getting the Nike account. Okay. Because... We got to remember, not everybody knows this stuff. I forgot. I'm, we're we're okay. in the conversation. What is a, I know what what is a about, Nike but... account? A Nike account is a gift and a curse. <laughs> okay? A Nike account is a gift and a curse. Got to buy the bag right? just to get a the A Nike good. account is a gift and a curse. Okay, listen. The reason why it's a gift is because it's a chance to have a business. It's a chance to create an identity. Mm-hmm. It's a chance to take care of your community. And it's a chance to fulfill people's dreams mm-hmm. with the shoes that they want. The reason why it's a curse is not all product is made the same. Because mm-hmm. you automatically think that you get 
these 50 or 60 or 100 pairs of this good shoe that mm-hmm. sells out. Mm-hmm. And you don't realize for that 50 or 60 pairs of that good shoe that sells out, you get 120 of a shoe that's not supposed to sell out. Nobody it's wants. supposed to live on the shelf yep. and be a, a shoe for a, a month. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. So that's the only reason I say because it's, listen, having a Nike account is a blessing from God. Mm-hmm. All jokes aside, it, it is, there's not many people that can say they have a Nike account. It's like, that's Definitely. like a certain club. Like, you know, like one of those Especially clubs. as they continue to cut them. Yeah. So, you know, it's like a little club that you have and you belong to it. And you're mm-hmm. like thankful that you belong to it. So mm-hmm. it's great. The curse part is just that, like anything else, it's a business. So it's not, let me rephrase that. Having the Nike account is not a gift and a curse. It's a gift. Mm-hmm. The business aspect is the curse mm-hmm. because that's not due to Nike. It's everything that goes on behind the scenes and not even from them with my company. Mm-hmm. With like, you know, what sells, what doesn't sell, what consumers want, what consumers are feeling, mm-hmm. how the game has changed, how the resale market has made it worse or bettered it. So it's, 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 it's cool. And how you go about getting a Nike account, I mean, Back then, I don't know about now because I haven't applied for one right, you know, right, in right. some, you know, over, over double digit years. But back then it was like, I got lucky. I mean, I got really lucky. I'm going to be honest. I met somebody at Nike that just took a liking to me mm-hmm. and was like, yo, you're doing, you know, you, I like your ideas. I like what you're doing. You're working for somebody else, but I think you could do this. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened. But and I that's think, how we got I that. think that the, also comes with having heard, a bigger purpose too. Okay. What do you mean? Like when you have a bigger, like you said, you like what you're doing. You like where you're going. Like. Sometimes you may not have even said what your purpose was yet, but people can feel the energy. They just know well, what's that, up. That I think you're right about because when I first got the Nike account, I didn't have the purpose that I have now. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it right. or try to lie. Like When I first got the Nike account, I wasn't doing community stuff. Mm-hmm. I wasn't giving back because I was just trying to start up a business and build a business. For sure. And that's what I was focused on. Now that we've built the business and established the business, we found what the purpose is. And we found what makes it, what works for us and how we do it. Mm -hmm. But back then, supposedly, from what I understand, like, again, you were supposed to have a store, not sell Nike, not resell, not, you know, anything Nike. Mm -hmm. And you were supposed to apply online for an account. Okay. And then they would come back and hit you up and say if they wanted to check you out, if they didn't want to check you out. Which, if you really think about, it, that's hard. Like, how do you have a store without selling Nike? And then prove that you can sell it. Yeah. Well, I don't even prove it because any <laughs> nah, nah, could you, anybody can sell Nike. Kind of. Kind of. I, I disagree. I think anybody can you sell think Nike. So? I think some of that product sells itself. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah. But how could you stay in business until you get the account? Mm-hmm. Nowadays, I don't even know how you would go about getting a new account because I, I really, and again, it's just me being honest. I can't even remember, like, in years. What was a new store that came about? Right. Like it's stores that are already in business, neighborhood doors or, you know, chain doors or, or big doors, big box doors that yes. are just, just moving on and opening more doors. Yep. Like I haven't heard of a new name in a while. It's like, as I think about it too, yeah. Then you got me thinking now, like There's a what's lot a store? Of, a lot of the stores now, it's, you can almost name, like if you name a collab, it's like, those are the accounts. <laughs> as, essentially, like if you think about it with the Nike accounts. And so we're going to talk about collabs. And I'm, when we get into that. You, you, you know, some people are going to like my perspective. Mm-hmm. Some people are not going to like my perspective, but like I'm going to be honest. So that's where we were. We opened up the one door, opened up the second door, then went back to sneaker room. And that's when I started, that's when I started going back. Like I started, you know, I went back to the name that my mom had given me mm-hmm. and I said, let's do this. So that's where we at. Now I'm, I'm afraid of you because you got some good questions. <laughs> like I almost started crying. I'm going to keep it real. I might still, but when we started talking about pops and me saying that, you know, that he was the one that didn't, because think about it, you have to really understand, like. Most Indians, like I'm Indian from India. Like I'm not, I'm like, I'm from, I'm from the South side of India, which is crazy. But I, nah, for real, I'm from the South side. Don't let it fool South side. Nah, like, but I'm, I'm from Chennai, which okay. is the Southern part of India. Okay. So like, you know, most Indians that come to this country that use work visas or stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, they're engineers, mm-hmm. which my dad did have an engineering degree. Mm-hmm. But what happened was he got very sick and had a heart attack. Mm-hmm. And when he had his triple bypass surgery, and I think I was in third grade at the time, that's when everything switched. That's when we moved into the projects. That's when we didn't have much because he couldn't do what he was trained to do. Gotcha. You. you know what I mean? That's that's where it was. And most Indians, if you know, are very successful. Mm-hmm. Or at least not even in terms of successful being rich or anything like that, but they're not lower class. Mm-hmm. They're mostly middle class to upper class. There's not too many lower class, you know, Indians. Mm-hmm. And we were kind of the lower class. Like, you know, we didn't own a business. My dad wasn't, you know, at, after he lost, you know, because of the, the sickness, he wasn't an engineer. He wasn't into IT. Mm-hmm. He wasn't into software. 
not medicine, not pharmaceutical, like all the standard, not gas stations, you know, let's be funny, not 7-Elevens. No, nah, for you know, real. You know, not, not Dunkin', Dunkin Donuts. Like I always, used to, I always used to make fun of my dad. I'm like, yo, dad, I'm like, how come we're the only Indian that don't own a Dunkin' Donuts or a 7-Eleven? And he, you know, God rest his soul, he'd be cracking up with me, right, like, you right. know? And and like I said, when my store started to pick up and we started to do good things, the, the thing that took me and made me proud was my dad looked at it like, yo, I made it. Because I made it, he made it. And like you know, like if I had money in the bank, he'd be like, "We got money, right?" I'm like, what, 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 we? What do you? But okay, so paint, paint me that picture. Like that first time you remember being like, "This shit working." Like he he proud of me. Like I'm doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think I think he was always proud from even when I had the three thousand the three hundred square foot store mm -hmm. because it was a business. Mm -hmm. Like we started something. You know, like you're doing money. something. Yeah. I want to say go back to. I want to say maybe about. 14, 2014, like right when I separated with my partner, we went back to that. It's like 14, 15, 14, 15, probably 15, more like it. And I went to him and I gave him a check for 30 racks. Okay. And he was like, what's this? And I was like, it's your money plus interest. Mm -hmm. That was the moment where like his face changed. That's where it was like, wow, oh shit, like you did it. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, you gave me 15. You got, got double. double. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he didn't even want to take it. My right. dad was that good. Right. Like he did, he needed it, but he didn't want to take it. He right. was like, I'm good. But I gave it to him. He, he did, did cash, cash it, even though he didn't want to take it. It's like, you know, I, don't I think he actually it cashed it the next day. <laughs> right. Like, I think it was like, yo, I'm going to cash it. So that was the first time. The second time that I ever saw my dad that I really knew it was different was when we did the, the Victor Cruz breast cancer sneaker. Because mm. we had done three Nike IDs. Yeah. And we sold them. We raised some money and we donated some money. That's right. But again, my dad, the it was the Air Max one, the Pegasus, and then the Air Force one. Mm -hmm. But with that, my dad still, even though I donated the money, he was still whatever. You know, mm -hmm. like, okay. When we did the Victor Cruz shoe, and then we did the event in the store. And again, he didn't even understand the shoe. Like the collab part, nothing. But when we gave the $75,000 check to the hospital, and it was one of those big fake checks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he was right there standing with me holding it. Right. He was like, Yeah. Like, he's like, yeah, 75000 we're giving it. <laughs> and that's when, that's when I think he was proud. That's when I, I that's when I, at least, I, I don't even think I knew he was proud. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, circle ahead about maybe 11 months and the waiting room at the Christie Care Center, at the medical center, um, the, women's, the women's waiting room at the, at the women's center. We cut the ribbons to the waiting room that we paid for with that money. Mm. And the fact that my mom's name was on the wall, that it was a memory of her from me and my family, not just from Suraj. Right. It was the sneaker room and it was my dad's name. It was all of us. Mm -hmm. my, every, like, again, my staff is my family. Right. And we all were there and we cut the ribbon. That was the day, like, I, I think I've only seen my dad, all jokes aside, I've probably seen my dad in my whole life, whole life, cry four times. Okay. And I've seen him cry... In 98, when my brother passed away, mm -hmm. I seen him cry around 2001 or 2000. Like I said, I'm just so bad with him because, you know, listen, the years have just flew by. Right. But when his, when his mom passed away, who was my grandmother. Okay. And then I seen him cry when my mom passed away in 06. And that's three. Mm -hmm. And then I seen him cry when we gave that check. Mm -hmm. And he cut that ribbon. And that was real. Yeah. And that, that's what life is. For sure. Like, that's that's where my purpose was. Like, that was our first big give back project, but it just changed my life. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. It changed my life. So, you've had these moments. Okay. Now, how did we get to these moments? You got the account. You got the store. Now, talk about establishing the business, building the community, building the team, building the family, building the credibility within okay. the community, all those things. How did you go about navigating that space because at the end it wasn't heavy like you said social media wasn't as there big was no of a thing. you know what i'm saying it was like it was a facebook groups or gotcha. something like that that was about it like yep. so what did you what was your you know attack at growing the business so basically i mean growing our business that was organic mm -hmm. but let's start like you said let's start with the team mm -hmm. growing the team the team was organic the team jeff who's our creative director okay. who i've known for years before i opened the store like i've known him since 06 Moved up from Miami to work with me as our creative director. Okay. So That's you're like, hey, bro, I'm opening a store. Come oh, nah. up and work for I'm me. I'm down in Miami. Like, yo, come up, come up and hang out. And yo, you want to stay? And Jeff like packed up his suitcase and everything was like, yeah, you know what? I'll rock. You know, like, come on. <laughs> okay, you know okay, like, okay. Cool. And he's still with me. Yeah. Um, you know, um, everybody else on the team is like like local kids that used to shop with us mm -hmm. that joined us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some people have come. Some people have gone. 
you know, Jen, who was with me for nine years, who's like like my little sister from Miami, mm-hmm. she worked with us. She left us to go to Jordan Brand, which is great. No hard feelings. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, my manager now, Angel, started with us. It was his first job five years ago. It was his first job he ever got. And now he's moved up and he's the manager of the store, mm-hmm. which is, you know, God bless. He's 25 years old running the store. Right. And that's my right-hand man. Right. You know what I'm saying? My boy, my boy Hamlet, you know, that's my family. That's my Dominican son. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> my boy Ivan, my boy Tony, you know, was from LA and he's over here working with somebody else and he, it didn't work out and he's about to go back to LA and I'm like, yo, stay. Right. Like, what's up? And right. he rocked. Right. We just had that vibe. Uh-huh. So like one thing I will say that I do, I do compliment like on us is I think the synergy that me and my team have together, it's unpar- It's you, you just can't even compare mm-hmm. it because other stores, people just go to work. Like people come, like they come to the store to chill. Mm-hmm. Like we work too, but right. we chill. Right. I yell at them for chilling, but we chill. Right. Like you know what I'm saying. So it's, it's a great dynamic, and with the community, it's just been organic. Like we take care of people. Like we've always given like ten dollars off, fifteen dollars off a shoe. Mm-hmm. We've always tried to hold a shoe for somebody to help them out. Mm-hmm. We've always tried to do stuff that, and we've always just tried to treat people the way we want to be treated. Which I think you should do at any part of your life, not Definitely. only your business. Definitely. Like treat people with the respect that you want, and you'll get the respect back. My life, to be very honest, is very crazy because. Today's partner is ShopDNAShow.com. Are you tired of wearing low quality gear? I completely understand. I made a personal mission to go out and find higher quality stuff and give it to you guys at an affordable price. And not only because of that, I have to wear this stuff every day and I don't wanna be wearing cheap clothing all the time. So I wanna make sure that you guys know about it and are understanding that we have a lot of cool stuff coming out as well. Hit the link down below or pinned or wherever it may be. It's gonna be shopdnashow.com. There's new drops every single month. I'm excited to see you guys in the gear. And now let's go ahead and get back to the podcast. It's really funny the things that happen to me all because I'm nice to people. Mm -hmm. Like just coming into Portland, I rented a Jeep Wrangler. And, you know, I got off the plane and I went to render because the Jeep Wrangler was on sale for like $45. And I'm like, word, that's cheap. Let's do right, it. Right, right. And I get to the airport and I go out. You know, you know how PDX is. You go to the counter mm-hmm. and you walk out. Mm-hmm. So the dude comes running up to me. He's like, man, I'm so sorry. You know, it's going to be like 15 minutes. You know, I got to get you a Jeep Wrangler on the other side. Like, can you wait? And I'm like, my man, I just got off a five and a half hour flight. Like, I want to stand up. Like, take your time, right, bro. Right, right. You're good. And like, he goes to run and he stops and he's like, wait, you cool if I take 20 minutes? I'm like, yeah, bro, go ahead. Like, it's nine o'clock at night. Where am I going? Right. He's like, yo, you like this navigator? Right. I'm like, yeah, why? He's, I'm, he's like, you want it? And I'm like, how much more is it a day? He's like, nah, just go ahead, take the keys. Right, and I'm right. like, bet. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's like a $100 upgrade, $75 upgrade right, a night. Right, right, right. See what I'm saying? Same thing with like, when I walk around the streets, like it's crazy, but nowadays I'm not known as Siraj Sneaker Room. Mm-hmm. It's Siraj the Philanthropist. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and I'll go into the titles that I hold, which is like crazy for me to, for who I am. But that's what the business was built on. The business was built on relationships, caring, mm-hmm. treating people good, and not looking at people or the interaction as transactional. Right. That's the key. It's never been transactional. Please take notes. Everybody who's listening and watching, whatever you want to call it, please take notes on this topic right here because we're in the current market right now, especially with all the resellers. It's transactional for everything. Well, we're not I- building relationships. I go to SneakerCon now and it's just like, it's, it's a different place. Listen, I'm going to give you one better. I come to Portland every October mm-hmm. for the Dornbecker auction. We did that, you know, when we first started. Then we were a part of the, the DB program. Mm-hmm. COVID changed a lot of things, which, you know, we know it changed the world. Right. So then we weren't a partner, which mm-hmm. is no problem. It's no hard feelings. But anybody else would have been like, ah, oh, you know, we're not a partner. Cool. But then we still come here every year right. to donate to the foundation. Mm-hmm. Because I think that what the Dornbecker Foundation and Hospital stands for is amazing. Right. For but sure. now to use that as an example is... I'm a retailer that gets to go to Nike campus, right? Not many people do, mm-hmm. but it's not built on, hey, what can you do for me? Or can you help me get more shoes? Or can you help me do that? Right. It's built on, we've worked together before and it's just relationships. Right. Like everybody that I met with out here this week that I've been out here can't do nothing for me in my business. Right. Like they can't change nothing. They can't fix nothing. Because to be honest, I don't want to fix nothing. I like where my business is. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, and to be honest with you, I'm satisfied. Like I don't wish for more. Like when you keep wishing for more and you keep wanting more right. and you keep hounding people with that, to be honest with you, they don't want to mess with you. Right. Like they're like, oh, this person's needy. This person, all he wants is this. Mm-hmm. So like, it's so dope that I've been in Portland now since Sunday and today is Thursday. Mm-hmm. And pretty much like today was like the first meal that I ate at a restaurant. 
because my relationship yeah, is so house. good yeah. because I'm at people's house and they're yeah. cooking for me. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's not normal. That's so funny you say <laughs> like, that. Because that's not normal. I'm the same way. Like, I know so many people at Nike, Adidas, all the different things. And it's like, I be trying to tell people and they don't be believing me. I'm like, I know their kids, their yeah. wife, they're this. Well, like, we go over to like, the house. Like, I've had dinner. dinner like, I've had dinner with them with my wife when my wife was out here. When they come to New York, I have dinner with them with their wives. Right. Like, because the thing about it is, like, listen, the problem is everybody thinks that. When you meet somebody, it's all about what they can do for you. Mm -hmm. If you take that part out, we can be friends. It's hard. Don't get me wrong, corporate world, because everybody's wondering what you're doing or whatever. But if you really think about it, man, we're just humans and we're just trying to have relationships. That's like, it. realistically, we're not trying to build on anything else but that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, like I sat with, you know, listen, we sat with people last night and it was like, yo, like, there was not, we, we didn't talk about Nike. Mm -hmm. Even though they work for Nike, we talked about how's your kids? Wow, hey, Siraj, hey, Destin got so big. Like, you know, all right, prime example, prime example. We went to DNA today. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm very fortunate that we are allowed. Oh, oh tell them what the DNA department okay. Oh, you can tell them. You okay. can tell them. Department, wait, I forgot the end of Nike Archive. There you go. Department of Nike Archive. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I forgot it for a minute. Remember, it's, it's late out here in Portland. I'm still on East Coast time. You know, DJ was like, Siraj, I'm only here for a minute. It? Oh, yeah, it's like one in the morning. It, no, time. It, it is. I'm looking at it. I still got East Coast time. <laughs> So we went there today and I told my son and Angel, who's out here, my manager, I was like, listen, I'm going to get you guys a tour. Destin, it was lucky he's gotten a tour before. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'll get you the tour. So we go to the tour. So this is the funny thing. Crazy. So, there. well, first of all, like a lot of people don't know, like you just can't walk into DNA. No. Like even employees can't walk into DNA. No. Like it's, it's special. It's They're, very special. Yeah. So we got our first tour when we were part of DB, the program that was like the gift and it was mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm. So I had my kid with me that time, my wife and my kid. So here's the thing. So when my son Destin went to DNA the first time, mm -hmm. he was, and now I know I'm sitting down, but he was this big, okay? Mm -hmm. Then the second time he went to DNA because he got a second tour, mm -hmm. he was about this big, okay? So today we walk in and there's a guy there that works there that's been there for 20 years. That manages the whole thing. No names, no. Nah, we don't even worry about titles, but he's met my son both times. Uh -huh. and He's met my son even at like All-Star Weekend when they curate projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he walks in and he sees me and he's like, oh. And I'm like, Give him a hug. And then he looks behind me and he's like, <laughs> like, that's it's this big. Right. And he gives him a hug. Right. And it's just, it's, it's there. That's what it that's is. That's the relationship. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's DNA can't do nothing for us. DNA can't give us no product, but that's there. Right. And that's what we've built. Then the, the crazy part was we're in DNA, we're looking at the rooms. Um, you know, we're chopping it up, you know, and we walk into the basketball room. The basketball crazy. room. Okay. okay. Hold on. One yeah. second. I'll let you drink your water. So the DNA is like, like I said, the archive, which basically they have rooms with photos and sneakers just curated on these walls, just loaded with history, literally the history. It's not like the sneaker that's like all recreated. No, it's like, yes. that's the shoe from the thing. Originals. Yeah. Well, what they do is they use that, which is great when people are working on new projects mm -hmm. to see where the history is, see where the lineage is. And they got the all colors. the blueprints yes. and the paperwork and everything inside so, of there. We're looking at the best. We saw a couple rooms and I, you know, I'm not going to talk about all the rooms because some of them you can't talk about, but mm -hmm. like, and that's the respect, but there was a basketball room because that's, you know, just a broad category. Yeah. The only thing that was crazy to me was I'm looking around and there's, you know, this crazy stuff. And I, again, not talking about anything. And my son goes, dad, dad, we made it. <laughs> like, and I didn't even look and I turned around and there was the Kyrie mom last one that we did on the wall. That's fire. And it says sneaker room collaboration, like mom, 2021. Right. Boom. And I'm like, like I shed a tear. Like right. I was like, I was like, like, yo, cause to me, I've done a lot of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. That like that kind of like solidified, like if we never do nothing again, right? That kind of solidified that in the DNA and the archives of Nike, there is a shoe that me and my team designed, mm -hmm. sold, donated the money, and the real true fact is has my mother's name and birth date on, right? In there, right? You know, like, bro, like that's just like who could? <laughs> not many yeah. people could say that. No. Like, I know there's a lot of people that have done collabs, right. but like. This is a kid from Jersey City. I'm I'm right. excited. I'm right. happy. So right. like it's great. That's fire. It's great. That's fire. Okay. Speaking of the collabs. So tell me about the time you got the first call and you're like, I'm about to get my own collab. Yeah, it wasn't even like that. First time, go? no names. Met somebody from Portland in New York at a at an event. Was like, you know, what do you do? Tell them about my my breast cancer project. Tell them that we did Nike IDs. And I think I'm slick, you know, and sometimes I get I get myself in trouble. So I'm like, you know, talking about it, and then I'm like, don't talk about it. Be about it. Right. And then I left. 
And then they were like, you know who you did that to? And I'm like, nah, why? And they're like, hey, you're done. And I was like, <laughs> and I'm like, circle back a couple days later, I get a phone call, got my number, and was like, yo, if you could do any shoe, what would you do? Mm-hmm. Like, real talk. And I was like, you know, at that time, we had just done, like, that day that I met the person, we had just done the Victor Cruz um, release at my store for mm-hmm. Victor Cruz Trainer, and Vic mm-hmm. was our homie. So just out of the blue, I was like, I would do the Victor Cruz Trainer. I was like, all right, let me see what I can do. Boom, color it up, design it, did it. All right, we got you. 50 pairs. That's it, 50 pairs. Right. Your name's not on right. it. It don't say sneaker room. This was one color or three colors? One color. Victor okay. Cruz was one you color. guys just did the one yeah, color. Yeah, it didn't okay. have our name on it. Like, it was just like nothing. Like, you basically just gave me a pink shoe. Okay. Then we were like, all right, we're running with this because it's ours. Nobody right. else getting this shoe. Right. That's our shoe. Right. $75,000 later, check in the, to the hospital. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, these guys are onto something. Right. Like, we did something. Mm hmm. Then we continued the conversation, continued to talk. So, Wait, so what did you do with the Victor Cruz shoe when you got it? What do you mean? We sold it. You sold it for we, how much? We basically sold it. Like, we were like, what you want to pay? Oh, okay. It's going oh, to, that's it's going right. To yeah, 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 yeah. That's like, right. Yeah. And it was, so, yeah, yeah, okay. It was okay. In, like, I remember now. So it was like, honestly, we sold them for anywhere, like, I would say about a G. Mm-hmm. And then we made other money from, like, shirts and, like, stuff in the store and the event that we had. Right, the right, right. That's so, right. But, well, for 75000 for 50 shoes was, like, right. incredible. Crazy. So then so we they went, seen that and they're like. Oh, you after something. And and then we went and we were like, yo, like, what what would you do next? You got to Bo Jackson, SC trainer. And they were like, all right. And we were like, well, wait, we wanted the three colors. Okay, let's talk. Went, went the sportswear team, started cooking it up, cooking it up. Pink one, boom, mm-hmm. fire. My mom got those too. I saying? told her you was coming over. She was like, man, I got to find my box. I got to have him sign <laughs> oh, it. Oh, that's so funny. And I was like, ah, oh, it's too late. Like, and she was like, because she white, got so many shoes too. White patent leather. Yeah. Fire. Well, I mean, the pink one's right there. Oh, that's right. The I'm, more money, whoa, the more money see? did drop first. I tell you, see, I'd be out of it. Okay, okay, yeah. Wow. <laughs> see, I'm telling you, I'd be out of it, bro. All right, so it's the same story though. Yeah. We go, we get there. They say they give me the shoe actually. Okay. Matter of fact, yeah, I'm lying. Okay, second shoe was Victor Cruz, and then a the second shoe was more money. Okay. But they give me the shoe because they were about to bring that out of the archive. Mm-hmm. It hadn't been out again since right. original. Right. So they let us lead the storytelling with it, with the breast cancer project. Fire. So we did the black. Oh, we did the um the pink one. Of course, is always the the gr release if you want to call it. Mm-hmm. The white one was the special one, the white and pink, but the mm-hmm. black one is always the it's the joint. It's the top dog, right? There. So we did that and we did them in price. We did them in prices. I'm not even gonna lie to you, I forgot what the prices were. I think it was like it was like it was we did like a package one, price too. It was like I wanna say 150, like 250, 250 and 500 or something, something like that. Like, yeah, something Somewhere like that. around there. And then you know, we did them and boom, we we sold out again. Mm-hmm. We raised like a hundred and something thousand dollars and we donated that. Mm-hmm. So then it was the conversation. At that point, it was like, what shoe would you do? Okay, wait, sorry. So there you go. The, I'm glad you, I'm glad Angel's here because Angel the, got me. the part. So essentially Nike donates the shoe no. to you. No, 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 no. So no, how no. do they go about the manufacturing costs? So they in make the... they make the shoe. Okay. And just like every shoe that comes in the store, we mm-hmm. buy it at wholesale price. Okay. So you buy it at so wholesale. So we buy it at wholesale price. So let's just say So um, then that's kind of like your your actual donation towards it as well because no. that's your purchase of no, the wholesale no, no, price. No, 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 no. Because the way you would look at it is this: if a shoe was one fifty, mm-hmm. just like when we when we when we buy a shoe from Nike now, mm-hmm. it's one fifty, and say we pay seventy seven dollars for it. Right. They you can look at that at anything. It's not a donation. It's just it's the cost of doing business. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. So then the profit on it would be, you know, we're looking at seventy three dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that seventy three dollars, we donate that. We donate one hundred percent. So that's our donation. Okay, okay, okay. So like, let's just use a, a simple mathematic. Even though it's not fifty percent, let's use a simple mathematic. If the shoe was one hundred bucks, we would pay Nike the fifty bucks, mm-hmm. and fifty would be donated. Right. Even though that's not the exact number, it's higher right. what we pay. Okay. But that's what we would do. That way, you can cover the cost of product and then take all the proceeds. Yeah, well, just like anything, you, when you do business, you yep. sell it, and that's your gross sales, and then what's your net sales? Mm-hmm. I mean, this is your yeah, this is your gross and what's your net. Right. You know what I mean? Right, so right. our gross would be selling like say a thousand pairs at one fifty would be one hundred fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. But then the net donation would be minus the cost of the shoes. Right. Okay. okay. So we do that with the, the the more money. And then the next one was like, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. Bo Jackson, Bo Jackson. And we did it. <laughs> Again, going back to the pink colorway, mm-hmm. the white colorway, but this one flipping it with patent leather. Mm-hmm. And then we went to the black one with the pony hair. Mm-hmm. And the black one was the cool one. And it meant the most because we did pony hair for the women that lose their hair when they go through chemotherapy. Mm-hmm. And it was fire. Yeah. Again, sold out. Internet went crazy. Raised another hundred or something thousand dollars, donated the money back to different charities and different organizations. Mm-hmm. Then came the last one, and it was like, "This is the one we want you to do." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Bet." React Element was on fire at oh the time. My. It, I it was, was kind of all right. So I was salty because I wasn't salty, 
because everybody loved it. Because you were a thirteen or fourteen. I'm a thirteen, but you could wear a fourteen. I could wear a fourteen on the element. Yeah, I could wear a fourteen. So I might. Wrong. I'm yeah. not saying there might be I'm like one or two. No, 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 no. First of all, you didn't do it. I said it. Okay. Because you gotta say, I'm honored that I came here to do your your podcast. And your show mm -hmm. and my joints are there and they've been there because I've seen your podcast and yeah, show. Yeah. So again, like I said, it's not like I came here and you put them there. I yeah, know that yeah, you yeah. really you rock with them. I think there are 13 or 14s in, in, in the crib. I think so. Okay. I'm just telling you, it's not okay. a lot, but like I'm not, trust me. I don't so have if they're there, no, but if they're there, you got my word, I'm sending them. I appreciate it. But the thing about it was like that that shoe was crazy because we did again the three colorways. Mm -hmm. But on that one, it was hyped. But on that one, we had a fourth colorway. Mm -hmm. And that was the friends and family. We had never done a friends and family. Mm -hmm. And the friends and family had the Savorsky crystals on it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh. They're so it clean, like, bro. It was like, ooh. It was like, <laughs> it was like, ooh, what are you doing? And we did them. And then the project just stopped. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing bad. It was nothing bad. But like Nike, you know, Nike's an organization. Things change. The way you do things change. So it was like that. People on different teams. Exactly. People that, like, you know. People you're again, working with. Listen, they could be working on a different we don't, team we now. Don't, listen, we don't even ask a question when they say we're not doing stuff like that no mm -hmm. more. Cool. No problem. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay. Mm -hmm. But then we started doing the Kyrie's. And that was a funny one because I had talked to Nike Basketball. I was like, no, let's do a, let's do a charity shoe. And they were like, all right, what shoe you want to do? And I was like, I mean, I'm from Jersey. Kai's from Jersey. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. What was your uh, relationship with Kyrie during that time? Was it like you just happened to be from the same place? Or did you already know each other, rock with each other? Like, No, we happened to be from the same place. So you happened to be from the I same, never met same Kyrie place. Irvin. You never met Kyrie. <laughs> never and you got to collab him. with his shoe. Yeah. So all what right. happened was they're like, yo, tell a story. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, all right, let's tell a story. So... I did some I did some bullshit. I ain't gonna front. Yo, Jersey shoe. This is that. <laughs> I'm like, Wait. and then my man Sadat, who's an Eakin at the time, mm -hmm. and he's like, yo, bro, because I don't want to take credit for something that's not me. Mm -hmm. He's like, bro, you get an opportunity of a lifetime. That's what you're doing. <laughs> and I was like, damn, hold up. Like, and then he was like, think, go into further. Look, like, do some research. Even though you ain't talked to Kyle, you never met him, do some research. Mm -hmm. So started digging down. And I'm like, man. He lost his mom at a young age. Mm -hmm. I lost my mom at an older age, mm -hmm. but we both lost our mothers. Mm -hmm. No one ever honored their moms. Like, we need to do a mom show. Right. And when I pitched it to them, that's when they went to him because everything needed to be approved. Mm -hmm. And he was like, bet, like, let's go. Mm -hmm. So then again, the first shoe that we did, I still, I never met Kai. Mm -hmm. So we designed it, me and my team, and we did what we thought was good. And one of the things that we always thought was dope was like whenever you Google the picture of Elizabeth Irving, his mom, one picture always popped up with her wearing a polka dot blouse. Mm. So that's where the polka dot on the inside came from. Mm -hmm. And that was our nod to him, to give him something that was from him because right. we hadn't talked to him. Right. So they told me he rocked with it. They told me he loved it. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. And I don't know. Cool. No. Still had not met him. Get the call one day. Yo, Kai's playing in Brooklyn, yo, because the shoes hadn't released yet, but we had just got them. Mm -hmm. He's wearing them tonight. On the court. Fire. So I'm like, damn, StubHub. I remember that. Y'all was posting all the pictures So and I'm everything. like, StubHub. I'm looking around. Tickets like four grand courtside. I'm like, all right. Uh, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to make a moment. Bought the ticket. Kai comes out on the court. I'm I'm like, yo, like I'm, I'm it's a shoe that my team and me designed, mm -hmm. but it has my mom's name on it, mm -hmm. on an NBA court. I mean, I made it. Especially Kyrie at that time too. Yeah. Even. And, I, and I made it. And after the game comes over. We had talked maybe like once or twice during the design stuff. Mm -hmm. He comes over and gives me a hug at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Well, right, right after he finished playing. And I'm like, man, like, and then he takes the shoe and he sees a woman in uniform that had done the flag before the game, mm -hmm. takes them off and gives them to her. Fire. And I'm like, yeah, even though I really wanted them, not right, gonna lie to right. you, but I was like, fire. Yeah. Like, I'm, I gotta, I'm not going to sit here and try yeah. to tell his story. And I was like, fire. And he gave them to her. And then that from there just it just started. It mm -hmm. like it just really kicked up. Got to meet him, got to meet his dad Dread, got to meet Asia, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it kicked up. And then from there we did the second one. Raised money, donated, boom. From there we did the third one. Third one was really dope because we we used Asia to shoot them with us. And mm -hmm. it was fire. And then the, the last one that we did, we flipped it because the first three were all similar. Mm -hmm. White, black, and red, white, black, and red, a little bit of gold, a little bit of gold. Mm -hmm. They were dope, all different, but they were similar. Mm -hmm. So the next one, we was like moms, mother nature, mother earth. And that's where we went with that. And it was the elements. Mm -hmm. And it was what we get back. Mm -hmm. And that's where we went with it. And they were great projects, man. A lot of money raised, a lot of money donated. A lot of people, you know, got help from those shoes because of everything that we did. And it was phenomenal. And we saw every game, again, every time he wore them, we went to a game, we saw them. So, you know, in terms of collabs, 
sneaker room has one door in Jersey City. At one point, we did have two doors, one in Bayonne, but we closed that down to go into a bigger space in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. We have one door. And I mean, a lot of people have done collabs. Mm -hmm. But if you know how Nike works, collabs are, you know, what style number? Everyone has a style number. Mm -hmm. So for one door, I mean, we're 22 collabs in. Mm. That's pretty crazy that there's 22 styles. Right. So there's the Victor Cruises one. Right. There's the three Air More Monies. That's four. There's the three Bo Jacksons. That's seven. Right. Mm -hmm. There's the four elements. That's eleven. The first, the first uh, um, eleven. Right. Mm -hmm. The first Kyrie we had two. Mm -hmm. That's thirteen. The second Kyrie we had three. That's sixteen. The fourth, the third Kyrie we had another three. Mm -hmm. That's nineteen. Wait, wait, I lost my map now. Hold on, no, 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 hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. All right, we got 11 on the, we got, listen, this is how you know it's real. So we got 11 on breast cancer. It's right? now yeah, at 1 o'clock a.m. We got to know, we got 11, no, we know, we got 11. Don't, don't stop. Everybody's trying to be like, they all sent me notes and stuff. Like my phone's buzzing. Like, no, no, listen, we had, a, we had 11 breast cancer shoes, okay? Okay. Now, Kyrie, first one had two. Okay. Second one had three. Okay. Third one had three. Okay. Okay. So that's eight. Yeah. That's eight, right? Now, the next one, you had two. Mm -hmm. That's 10. But, there was the friends and family oh, pair that was made. The and there's and only family. three pairs of those. Yeah. But that's still a style number. On which one? So on the on the mom ones, the last ones. On the last one. The lavender ones. The lavender. Hey. Like, not a people even seen those. There's only three pairs in the world. So have you got some pictures? I mean, I don't have pictures with you, but I can send it to you when I get home before you air this. So that makes 11. So okay. there's 22. Okay. So there's 22. So we've done 22 shoes. And the proudest thing about those 22 shoes to me is that we donated every single dollar we right. made. Right. We didn't right. keep a dollar. We didn't move forward with nothing. We donated everything. And that's where it is. We have uh, the waiting room at the hospital. We have uh, giraffes in the NICU at the hospital. Mm -hmm. We have um, uh, the food pharmacy at the hospital that okay. we've opened. We have the Tigers Den at Snyder High School that we've done. Um, we're building a Zen Den now. Like We're continuing even without collabs. We're continuing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've done a uh, back to school block party with money from that stuff going oh, every yeah. year. Every I was just about year, to ask you about the block parties year. too. We do, we do the turkey drive every year. We're like Bumpy Johnson out in the streets handing out turkeys. So what's you that know, looking like? How do you guys uh, prepare for that? Because I'm, I have like this, it's like this size, this room at the other house that's like loaded with clothes and stuff. And I'll be doing it every year and I just go out and hand it to the homeless. Yeah. We don't really like make a lot of videos and stuff, but I'm like, but I need should. to start doing a, it to but, like promoting like no. getting more people involved that's the word help. don't use promote use well, the word I, you want to inspire yeah, others to I, need help. People, that's I need more help well like, that's the thing about us like when when you see me on instagram on my personal page like sneaker room is sneaker room mm -hmm. and you see everything that we get from the store you see everything that we sell and you see every project that we do mm -hmm. when you follow me on my, my personal page you see me and my family and you see every philanthropic thing that i do because I don't do it to boast who I am. I don't do it to get accolades for what I do. Right. I do it to inspire others. Mm -hmm. And it's worked. Because other people have come to us and said, we want to work with you and we want to collab with you and we want to do what you're doing. Right. And that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Like, if you if you put it out there for the right reason, people will receive it. Yeah. And that's like, me and my dad were talking about that on the podcast with me and him. Like, so I've been giving away shoes literally since yeah. when I was in grade school. We go like I was just talking because we do remodels, home remodels yeah, of and course. stuff. Mm -hmm. So we got the plug at Home Depot every year. We at the last week uh, uh right before Christmas. Okay. The lady she'll just give us trees for like a penny or like ten cent or something. So funny, and we'll just load up the so trailer and go that. get Christmas trees do, and give them to families. What we've done in previous years is we'll go on Instagram and we'll say, if you know anybody that needs a tree mm -hmm. with decorations, mm -hmm. hit us up. Mm -hmm. And people will hit us up like from domestic violence um centers. Um, foster home. Yeah, you'd be so surprised how many people just that Christmas tree they need, need it, and then like well, it could change so much for them. But the other thing about it, when we put up that we're asking for trees, right? Then people start hitting us up like, "Yo, you need gifts for those people that need the tree." Right. So it's a domino effect. Mm -hmm. It's like you put up something, and something else comes from it. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I'm saying? Like like last year we started. I mean, we started a Christmas parade in Jersey City. That's fine. We did the first ever Christmas parade. That was us. That's dope. Like we did that. Like there's something happening next month that I can't talk about. But if it goes, like, wow, mama, I made it. Mm -hmm. And it's not a shoe. I'll tell you right off the back. This has nothing to do with a shoe. Right. But it's just with the stuff that we do with the philanthropy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, like, like, listen, man, like, all jokes aside, D, like, I'm just happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Like, and, not, and I'm not talking about, you know, happy to be here just with you. I'm just happy to be alive, man. Like, every day I wake up and it's truly a blessing. Like, I, I you know, listen, man, I, I lost my mom. My brother in, in, in 98, I lost my mom in 06, and I lost my dad in 23. Mm -hmm. 
and like not many people are 40 I'm gonna start crying bro not many people are 43 years old mm -hmm. and lost their whole family right you know what I'm saying I don't have a mom I don't have a dad to call so like this thing that, that we call life mm -hmm. is the most most cherishable most enjoyable most most promising most anything that we have like every day I wake up man and even if I'm having a bad day because I have a lot of bad days it's like yo like I'm just happy that I'm, I wake up. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm happy that I get to see my kids. Mm -hmm. I'm happy I get to see my, my, my dog. I'm happy I get to see my wife. Like, going to my store, I really don't have to go every day because my staff is wonderful. Mm -hmm. But I go there, to be honest with you, just to see them because I love them. Right. Like, I, I genuinely and, and full-heartedly love life. Mm -hmm. Like, everything about it. The good, the bad, you know, everything. I just, I just, like, we take everything for granted, man. Like... We talk about collabs, we talk about a store, we talk about success, but like, what really is success? Right. Is it how much money you have? Is it what car you drive? Is it is it, you know, the clothes that you have? Is it this, like, no man, success is love. Mm -hmm. If you have love, you have success. Like, you could be the brokest MF out here. You could be the poorest MF out here. If someone loves you, you still have success. Mm -hmm. That That's real. Mm -hmm. Like that's that's genuine, man. Like that, all this other shit don't matter. Like I love this beautiful wall. Right. <coughs> it, it's like worth a lot of money. It could be gone at any moment. But, I'm the same way. No, Trust but not me. even that. Like, but but no, not even that. That it could be gone in a moment because that's true. But I walked into your studio today to see you, mm -hmm. and I got to see your mom. Mm -hmm. That's dope. You just talked to me about your mother. Mm -hmm. That's dope. That's you talking about your father. Mm -hmm. That's dope. Like you haven't even talked about one of your, one of your expensive shoes. Right. See what I'm saying? Right. That's life. Yeah. Like that's that's what this that's what this is about. Yeah. Like again, like I came out to Portland and I got to see all my old friends, not Nike people. I got to see old friends. Right. I got to kick it with people that I might not see. And literally, just last week, I was supposed to have lunch with him on Wednesday. Yesterday, just last week, one of the homies passed away. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we're in Portland. I'm sure you read about the story. Christian Deaton mm. and his wife yeah. Michelle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Passed away together last week in, in Cali. Mm -hmm. And like that just goes to show you. Right. Like, look at that, bro. Like, we were supposed to have lunch. We talked three weeks ago. We were supposed to have lunch on Wednesday. And I get a call last Thursday that Christian's gone. Right. Like, wow. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's it's definitely, <coughs> I know it's not even for it's a higher percent chance of seeing people losing more people at like your age compared to my age. Yeah, 100 percent Right. So like I've been seeing it so much more, especially through COVID and everything yeah. with people that's in my parents age range and like seeing them going through it and how much more they even cherish every moment being with me, being with my wife, being with my, Bro, I left on my Sunday. sister, I all left those on, things. I left on Sunday and I text my wife Monday morning, all jokes aside, I text my wife, I see, I see, I see men, yo, you got a really good staff in it, even though they're my staff. And yeah, my yeah, yeah. But, uh, they're but like, you got two I, minutes to look at. But I text my wife <laughs> on Monday and I was like, yo, I already miss you with my kids. Mm -hmm. Like I really do. Because like genuinely, not even trying to be funny, like I guess like since I lost my dad now and he was like the last part of my family, mm -hmm. I kind of have anxiety. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm away from my family, I have anxiety. Like my son moved to Grenada, my oldest son, to go to med school. Mm -hmm. And like, let me tell you, bro, I cried for a week straight. Like right. I took him out there, I dropped him off. I was just talking to Angel today and I was like, and not Angel, my son, I was talking to Angel, my right hand and, you know, in my company. And I was just telling him, I'm like, yo, I miss Angel. And he looked at me, he goes, I know you do, man. I know right. you. Because I do. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like my boys, you know, down in the Caribbean. And like I went to see him, like put it to his. We went down there to see him last month, me, my wife, and my son, mm -hmm. Dustin. And yo, like everybody was like, damn, that's so dope. Because our families didn't come see us. Right. Like I wound up taking him and his new homies out to dinner. Right, right. Because they was just like, we want to come with your with your parents. Right. That's so, so funny. Cause, <laughs> so when I was in when I was in college, you know, playing football, it was the same way. Yeah. Like family affair. Like when I lived in Boston out there, it'd be like, I'd pull up, like all my roommates, they'd be like, bro, y'all be having it turned up. Like we everybody be up in there, my that's dad, my see? mom, everybody like And they probably enjoying your yeah, parents as much as their parents. Yeah. Like home, my dad would pull up. Be, they'd be like, "Your dad barbecuing or what?" Yeah, and you know your dad's gonna pay for dinner, so yeah. they, you know, like you're gonna free food. Yeah. We've been on a journey, DJ. We've been on a like, like if this the DNA show was the right name for this show, yeah, because you done took it from the start to to. I'm not gonna say finish. We ain't finished yet, right. but you took it to the start around everything, like how it started, family. Like this is real. Well, for me, I think a lot of people see like on the channel, I care about shoes yeah. but i tell people why i care about shoes and all different things the stories behind them you name it but if it wasn't for my family getting into it all the different things yeah, there's so man. many things that tie into it and my dna is always like what am i interested in all yes. those different things yes i'm not just 
a sneaker person. Yes. I'm not just a real estate person. I'm not yeah. just a, a football player. I'm not just a that. You're like, not just a giver. I'm interested you're not just, in all and, these things. You're not just a giver since, you know, you said, yo, I'm going to give your son a pair of size 12s, right? You said that, right? <laughs> no, no, so I, I want to see on the listen on the podcast. You got to throw people under the bus to see what you're they say. You in. see, I try to lock them in. Said, you know, see that? I gotta shoot the reviews. Right. See, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> nah, we just, I listen. That that that's why, to be honest with you, I really genuinely wanted to get up with you because I've known you for a long time. I've watched you grow over the years, mm -hmm. just like my business grown. I've watched your career grow, and I remember meeting you at shows and you running around with a small bullshit camera. Just trying to get videos. Yeah. And we've always said we're going to link and we never really link. We talk, but we never get the actual right. sit down and do it. And I made it a, a, a point that on this trip, I was going to talk to you and get with you because I just think that realistically, I've been interviewed on a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they always just want to talk about the transactional relationship. Right. The shoe, the business. Right. That's it. They would probably be like, so... How was it with Victor Cruz? Yeah, so, how was it with so and so? So after the first one, how did it work with Kyrie? <laughs> right, right, like right. when you meet Kyrie and you right. talk to Kyrie, yeah. like when you see him, because bro, like don't get me wrong, those are phenomenal moments in my life, mm -hmm. but they don't define me. Mm -hmm. What defines me is everything we talked about: the giving back, the hospital, the schools. Like bro, like so. All right, kid from the projects, mm -hmm. no high school diploma, mm -hmm. first son at nineteen years old, second son. 25 because he was born a couple days my birthday mm -hmm. okay ready siraj owner and founder of sneaker room cool check right siraj was on the board, the jerry city medical center foundation board for five years mm -hmm. foundation board's cool mm -hmm. it's about helping getting runs and all that right oh two months ago siraj moved from the foundation board to the actual board of trustees Fire. for the hospital okay like people that know what a board of trustees at a hospital is that's a step. Right. That's a step. Right. Siraj, uh, County Prep and High Tech High School, which are the like very prominent high schools in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. Well, I shouldn't say Jersey City, in Hudson County. Mm -hmm. uh, business Advisory Board, sit on that board. Mm -hmm. Cool. Jersey City Economic Development Corporation, which is something that has to do with um, UEZ funding and you know state funding, and it's for small businesses mm -hmm. and for SID zones and all that. Right, right, right. Siraj on the board. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait. Siraj on the board and treasurer. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I've taken what we do in terms of sneakers and the store and turned it into what else we can do in life and how we can help people. Mm -hmm. Like, I go to schools. I talk to kids. I'm in, I'm in a middle school, which is the bilingual hub of Jersey City, number seven school. I'm in that school at least once a week. Mm -hmm. Like, I walk around the hallways like I'm the principal, even though principal's my homegirl. Jamie, shout out to Miss Barnaska, as you know. But we walk around and, you know, like, they say hello to me. They talk to us. Two of my, my staff members, Angel, my manager... And Ivan, my mm -hmm. logistics guy, right? They went there and graduated with there. And now they go back with me and we give back at their at their grammar school. That's it's fire. so dope. That's fire. It's so dope. Last year at the graduation, like I spoke at the graduation and I gave two scholarships out to kids in my dad's name mm -hmm. at that school. So dope. Uh, you know, they're doing the 150th anniversary of the Jersey City Board of Education. They called us in and we got involved and we're giving gifts away collabing with the city to do that mm -hmm. um you know block party um rocking with the seniors we work with the jersey city police department heavy mm -hmm. you know our mayor steve fuller great guy we work with him heavy mm -hmm. like we are we are we're not a store in the community we're a community in the store mm -hmm. like that's what we are like you know what i'm saying we rock we're having, you know, we got the mayor wearing Jordans. Right. Like he's rocking. He's right. rocking, right? He got right. Travis Scott's. He, he can get those from us, though. But, <laughs> but he got Travis Scott's. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we got to right, so think of it this way. I'll give you one better. Sorry to interrupt the podcast, but I had a quick question. Are you guys interested in taking your shoe game to another level, but you just don't know where to start? I built a full program just for somebody like you, the Six Figure Sneakerhead. It's an eight-week program that takes you through all the steps that you need to know. We have a full community where you can engage with everybody else that's going through the same program as you. We have monthly live meetups where you can connect with me and other members on the inside, and we set goals for each other and hold each other accountable. Also, we give away a free pair of shoes every single month with different challenges. If this is something that's for you or you're looking to take your game to the next level or even flip your sneakers to turn that into real estate, this is the place where you need to be. I can help you with finding loans and remodeling properties and getting yourself on the right path to become a millionaire if that's something that you desire. If this sounds like something for you, hit the link down below in the description and get signed up today. This is more than just sneakers. I want to see people grow and succeed in all aspects of life. Let's get back to the podcast. My man Busy, you know, part of Cactus Jack, real mm -hmm. good dude. You know, he's younger than me. So I was big bro when he was growing up. 
Okay. Okay. He he did something really good. He's with Cactus Jack. Utopia drops. Okay. The week that Utopia drops, we're in the projects where Busy grew up in Jersey City. You know, the, where we're all you know we're all from. I'm from a different projects, but we're down in the projects. Mm -hmm. My son Destin, and we got Trav. Chase. Oh, I saw Dunny, that. Yeah. Hanging yeah, out yeah, in yeah. the projects with the kids. Right. No security. This was in the summertime, no right? No cops. This was just when Utopia dropped was a couple months ago. Yeah, this is and like the down end of there. summer. You weren't supposed yeah. to talk. That, that was that's <laughs> <his voice. laughs> no, you're We good, got you're good. No, but the thing was, it was right before school's out, and we had Travis Scott in the projects with us. That's right. I remember Rocking that. with the kids, signing Jordan. I was like, it was on your story. Just random. Yeah, like, like, what just, is just, going just on here? Off. Like, you see, that's, that's community. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like, like, it's not calling Busy up and saying, yo, Biz, is there any way we could get Trav? Because it's a big ask. Could we get Trav to come to the right, room? Right. Nah, we good. We in the projects. We in the streets. Right. Like, let's do that. Like, let's have some fun. We do the Puerto Rican Day Parade every year in Jersey City and we rock out with a float. And mm -hmm. I'm not even Puerto Rican. Right. We do it because like, a, I'm we have, up, well, a we are not, but A, we have a big enough community that does it. And my wife is Puerto Rican, so my kids are Puerto okay. Rican. Okay. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? My kids are biracial children. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they we got we got a very good mixture Welcome of the family. Welcome to the club. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got a very good mixture of the family. Like we're minorities. Like, listen, you gotta understand, like, we're a minority owned business, bro. I'm Indian. Like, we we are the original mud boys. Like, mm -hmm. we come from the ground. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that goes to show, like we had talked about earlier about being stupid and ignorant and thing. But if you follow on the gram, I don't even like the word follow. Let's not get into that. I'll, I'll tell you why I don't like the word follow. I know. I hate I'm that too. You, but Support on yes. the gram. Well, that's no, the thing. I, I always know. say that. When, no, no. When we were young, when we were younger, right? When I, my kids were younger, I always used to tell my kids, and I'm sure your dad used to tell you this, don't be a follower, be a leader. Right. So why is it okay with Instagram and social media to become a follower? Right. So like, I wish that we could- And a just, user. Well, I wish we could. I hate that word. Too. That, that's a I good word. Too. I didn't, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I, I didn't even go that far into some of it. Oh, I hate but that. But imagine if we changed the word follower to supporter. Mm -hmm. So, like, when you meet somebody, yo, I'm gonna support you on a gram. Not right. I'm gonna follow you on a gram. Right, right. So, you know, if you out there Instagram and you see this, you heard it here first. Change the word. All right, it's Raj, October 26th, well, 27th, whatever, 2023. Change <laughs> the word, supporter. No, but the thing is, like, um, damn, I lost my train of thought. Now, where was I? Wait, hold on. So, so you got me with that. Once you got the Instagram <laughs> follower thing, you got me. And I'm going, okay. But it's just, like I said, it's just about giving back. It's yeah. just about doing stuff. Like having Trav in the store, If and I'm not saying we could ever get it, but it wouldn't have meant as much as having Trav with the right. kids. And right. Busy did that, and that was phenomenal. Right. And I'm just happy that, you know, that's the homie, and I'm a part of the family that we were there with it. You know so what I mean? So I need you to help me. Okay. So. Oh, damn. I, everything that you said, I could see myself doing. Okay. Everything that you said, I'm interested in. Okay. I'm moving towards, but I'm doing it by myself. Okay. I don't have, I have a team. Don't get me wrong. No, no discredit no, to my ahead, team. Listen, let's go. But I don't know the right steps to get so let's in, talk. The, in, the, in the direction I need to be. So let's talk. So right now, I currently pull up to middle schools and I have a presentation that I put together about building a brand in... Um, a business through social media. Okay. And I teach them about how to use social media in, in a uh, good way. Positive way. In compared positive to just way. being on it. Or being so, an internet bully. Right. right. You do it the right way. So this is how you can do it. This is how you can monetize. Yeah. This is how you can follow your dreams. This is how you can do all your things. So I do that right now. Um, I'm planning on going back to my high school already. I talked to the school. I want to do something like soon. Like in November, we're going to do something. And then at the end of the school year, I want to do something. Uh I don't know what it looks like. I just uh, want to go do something. I want to so, just be helping out and okay. providing so I information and I got something for you. And I'll give say, away. I want to give away like vlog kits and stuff and I'll like say, help I'll people say, build I'll their say it stuff. On your show. Go ahead. Don't do November because November's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. Don't do December because that's Christmas. Okay. Yeah, do there's it, like no school in November. Do it in December. January. Okay. And I'll fly back out here and I'll go to the school with you. Okay. And I'll talk to the kids. Okay. And I'll tell my story because my story is one that they understand. Mm -hmm. And I'll figure out how. That we give away a couple prizes too. Okay. That's how we can collab on something to start. Okay. And do that. I'm and then from there we can do other things and talk about other things and try it. Whether it's teaching kids how to build their own company, we're making no money by starting a t-shirt company and doing mm -hmm. pre-orders. Mm -hmm. We can teach them that. We can teach them a lot of things because that's the thing about us is we don't just want to do stuff just in Jersey. Right. Because we want to become that other you know thing. So I will help you with that. Right. Off the air we can talk, and I'll, I'll even like I said I'll, I'll buy the plane ticket. I'll fly out here. And we can have fun. I got an Airbnb you can stay at too. That's so. cool. It's free? Yeah. Oh, see, I got it to say free. I got three rooms. I, I just, listen, I got, wait, wait, you got three rooms? Three or? rooms at the house. No. It's a three bedroom house. Yeah, but like if I'm staying there, yeah. I'm not staying with other people in the other Yeah, as long as you're not like spooning with your son or anything, no. we're good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> 
Yo, yo, D, D, it's got serious. What I'm saying- There's a room for him too. No, no, what I'm saying is, no, that's not even what, no. What I'm saying is, when you hear Airbnb and you see your three rooms, that means he rents each room out and you have public no, spaces. No, no, it's the whole house. I'm it's saying that house. I want the house because I don't want yeah. nobody else staying here No, it's the whole house. Okay. It's the whole house. Okay, that, yeah, D, you took it there. I'm not- <laughs> The DNA, the, the DNA show almost turned up. We almost started wrecking stuff. We almost, yo, chop it. We from Jersey, oh, get it? Shoot. Chop it. Now it's not Angel no more. You see, I'm not calling him Angel. I'm calling him Chops. That means it's getting real. No, but like the fact that you want to get into it, I'm down. Let's get into it together. Because like, bro, I really do wish when I was starting off and I did this, mm -hmm. there was somebody that would help me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have help and I didn't have guidance. Now I've been meeting the right people. Right. I've been talking to the right people. And that's the thing. I want to I wanna give away. Give away or give my knowledge away mm -hmm. to whoever would like to take it. Not yeah, saying that I know everything because I'm still, every day, I'm still a student. Right, Every right. day I learn something new from somebody. I love Whether when we learn from younger people. Yes, exactly. That's the best yes. part because like, I've been learning a lot too, like a lot how to how a, a lot of the younger people navigate yeah. with their merch brands, like on yeah. TikTok and stuff. And I'm like, this is interesting. Like, bro, these kids are making style. more money than we made. More, made than it's we, crazy. They making more money than we might make ever in our life. And people you know would be mean? foolish to be like, oh, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Like, you oh, gotta go wait, learn. I remember what I was talking about now. So What's up? This. So we were talking about how ignorant child, American child. Oh didn't yeah, want, didn't yeah, want yeah. to go back to you know India. Didn't want to go to family. Dad passes away mm -hmm. right in October. Went back to India for the first time in a. Oh, Yo, in forever, mm -hmm. probably 30 something years, connect with the family. Mm -hmm. But now I see how it is over there. Now I know. So now what we're working on in India, which is really crazy, we're trying to put it together solar powered water filtration systems Fire. in memory of my dad yeah. so that we can give clean water to the villages mm -hmm. that don't have clean water. Mm -hmm. So you see what I'm saying? That goes back to why I'm saying, like, I would love to do something here in Portland with mm -hmm. you. Because if you really think about it, like, even though I'm not from Portland, like a lot of my business is because of Portland, right? No, so for it sure. would it would be kind of sure. dope to do something back here to talk to the kids back there to inspire them because when you really and you said you go to schools and talk to kids, right? Mm -hmm. When you go to kids schools and talk to kids, don't you ever realize that kids just want a they want to hear somebody talk about things that they've done to get where they are, right? That look like them, right? For sure. And two, they just want to talk back and have somebody listen, for sure. Like you know what I'm saying? Like right. you know, it's, like it's compared to this is the only way you can do it. Da, 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 da. Like I'm here. That's why I like to thank have. You. Plenty of Thank time you. for questions at yeah. the end of the at the talks because I'm like that's well, the most funny, important. It's funny, like I'll speak, I'll speak at um, I speak at career days, and it's funny. You'll have a cardiologist, you'll have a lawyer, you'll have a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, well, cardiologist is a doctor, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But you'll have a senator, and then I come up, I do my thing, and the end of it when there's questions, they're all for me. And like the senator's walking up, and like I'm not doing this no more. You're here, right? I don't right. Get a question asked, and I'm like, yo, my bad. I'm a little cooler than you. You right, know what I mean? Right. But don't let it fool you. I also teach the kids. Like you see, my arms are sleeved up, mm -hmm. but I tell the kids in high school that they shouldn't get tattoos. Right. I tell them that you should wait till you have a career. You should wait till you know what you're gonna do in life before you go get something on your forearm. Man, like especially all these, on your face. Yeah, all these tattoos that I have came after I had my own business. Mm -hmm. When I was still working, they were all above my shirt level. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying nothing bad about tattoos because again, I have them. But I'm telling you that you need to make smart decisions in your life until you know where your life is going. Right. That's all I'm telling you. Right. You want to get your chest? You want to get your face tattooed? Cool. Just make sure that aligns with what you want to do. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Make sure the alignment is there. I feel that. When did you get your first tat? Oh, 98, when my brother passed away. Okay. It started with a small little line here, and it just said, rest in peace, Omar, mm -hmm. you know, 2-20-98, and then it turned into the whole thing for my brother as I got older and I had my career. Mm -hmm. So I wear my brother here, I wear my dad here, I wear my mom here. This is my Catholic side for my mom, so it has the Mary and, you know, the religious cross. Mm -hmm. This is the Indian side for my dad, so, you know, we have um, um, Ganesh, we have Lakshmi, the Indian gods, mm -hmm. and, you know, that that's what we do. Damn, this was good. What else you got? <laughs> Listen, I, I was just thinking about it too. Cause I got my whole ribs tatted for my grandma. See what I'm and saying? And then my, my mom, she had two of my siblings didn't make it. So I got I'm both so of them sorry, on my back. So they sorry. got my back. They got so your back. I put them on, on my back. back. Yep. Well, you see, that's the thing. Like when you when you go into a school, they have Pokemon on their arm. Mm -hmm. Betty Boop on their arm. Right. Batman on their right. arm. And I'm just like, yo, like when you're 35, you still want Pokemon on your arm? Right. 
Like all my tattoos have a meaning. I could tell you the story of my dad, my mother. I could tell you everything. Yeah. You just told me the story of your grandmother and your siblings. I'm about to get a hot air balloon on this side. That's Ooh, for your dad. That's gonna be see, spicy. Mama, see? But, I'm, but again, I listened to what you said. Yeah. That's for your dad. I already know what it's yeah. for. Yeah. Meaning. Yeah. Not Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Not not Charmander. Mm -hmm. Not Pikachu. Yeah, I know my stuff, <laughs> Destin. You taught me right. I, you taught me right. You schooled me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's the thing. Like I have the Bordeaux Sevens tattooed on my leg. I did um, VH1 Black Ink with Caesar. Oh, no. Season three, I did it because of the fact that. That's the story that my mom and I couldn't get the shoe. Mm -hmm. So every tattoo that I have has a meaning. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything that I can't tell you the story about. Or that's that. just a Smurf. Yeah. You know, you, you you kids don't even know what a Smurf is. Never mind. <laughs> never mind. Never mind. So what, like, up? what up, D? What else, D? <laughs> you got me for coming before I run out this door. Even though I almost ran out the door when you did that, you said that that little comment, we're gonna let it rock. <laughs> it's not going, you know, I'm, I'm still a little upset by that one. <laughs> you know? You know? Okay. You know. <laughs> so, anyways. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. Let's wrap it up. I know you need to get to sleep. Nah, talk it's to been me, a long guy. week if we need to. Uh, we have a fire round at the end where we go over the questions that I always get asked. So, I'm like, let me ask them to everybody else and see Let's what do they it. say. I like so, that. How many pairs of shoes do you have in your collection? Last time I counted, it's probably like... A little bit over 1,500 pairs. Okay. Like, that's where it's at. I like that. Yeah, a little bit over. So, what's up? Can we do the collection tour or what? I'm going to be honest with you. No. <laughs> well, A, no, because I, I wouldn't let a camera in my house. My okay. wife my wife is adamant about that. I because that. one thing that I, I, I've learned in life is the home is your sacred place. For sure. It's where my wife and kids sleep. So, we just keep it a little bit private. Mm -hmm. That's all. Nothing bad. The other thing is we'd have to take trips because it's not only in my house. Mm -hmm. You know, storage. I mean, I didn't seen it on your story before. But, like, but you be posting you, every well, now let, and then. Let me, let me keep it real with you. You see your collection, how great it is? Mm -hmm. My collection is not that great. Because I never got into the PE game. Mm. Um, I never wanted to pay X amount of money for shoes. It's crazy. My, my collection is more so um, a lot of stuff that we've sold at the store because I keep pretty much everything. Like, I get high on my old supply every day. Oh, for sure. Um, it's more so stuff that I like. Like, right now, like, I'm into this phase. Angel... It, my boy Angel's 25, man. I keep talking about him because he's an old soul. And my boy Jeff, the creative director at the store, you know, you know, he's he's into comfy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got me in Romero's now. Like, oh, Romero's, shoot. Romero 5, P6000s. <laughs> like, yo, I'm, not, I'm in comfy shoes. <laughs> like, I put a pair of Jordan 3s on the other day and I was like, yo, what am I doing? No, for like, real. I was like, yo, what? Like, it was the first for thing real. I was like, what am I doing? I, oh, man, we could talk about that for a split okay. second. So I got, I got, the, seven, the I got shoot, 1,500 The transition pairs. of yeah. the shoe game, like, People buying stuff Wait, for a purpose. Me the questions I know, but I just, just I, okay, I, what do you I want had a question that? about that. Right, what up? you think about the shoe game and where it's gonna go? Because, like you said, everybody's looking for something comfortable. Everybody's yeah. looking for something. To, well, listen, the, the shoe style game, is changing. The shoe game is interesting right now in general because not only is the style changing, the market's changing. Mm -hmm. Now that shoes are not selling for what they used to sell, people are not buying. Mm -hmm. So that means that they were never buying for themselves. Oh, for sure. Like it's nice to see now when someone comes in to buy a shoe because being that it's not really reselling for nothing. It's like, where this dude's gonna wear these? Right. Like, it's nice to see people actually coming in, and it's also nice to see people that actually used to want to buy shoes that couldn't get them coming in. Like, oh, you got these? Yeah. What's right. up? Right. Like, right. not right. have to, you know, fighting somebody for them. Yeah. So it, it, it's it's very different times, and I think it's gonna be interesting because I don't even know what the companies are doing further on. You know, a year from now or two years from mm -hmm. now, even though I'm part of the you know the program, we don't know until we see it. Right. So I'm actually on the same page as you, and I'm interested. And I'm waiting mm -hmm. to see what's going to change and where it's going to go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I want to see. I just think that comfy shoes are in right now. Like, you do want to be comfy because, you're like, our feet hurt, bro. Man. Like, like, you know Not what I'm saying? Sure. Like, and you can get that from, like, with the remastered stuff, like Jordan's doing. Mm -hmm. They're remastering the tooling, the materials, mm -hmm. and the comfort. Mm -hmm. Like, because they know that back then what you were wearing to now is not the same. Right. So, like, with that name itself, remastered, I think we're finding out new stuff and finding out new technology and putting it in old stuff. Right. I like that. Okay. So, next question. Yeah. What is the most you spent on a pair of shoes? I don't even know. Mama asked Destin. Destin probably because that's my that's my that's my accountant and my oh, okay. and my and my, and my, and my, my shoe keeper. Hey, twenty one hundred, right? I think the most expensive was twenty one hundred on the on okay. the off white. Uh, what made you, what made ones. you have to pull the trigger? So I liked them when they first came out. Mm -hmm. I I, I love them because I'm an Air Force dude. That's one of my favorite shoes. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to spend the money mm -hmm. at all. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. I feel that. And then Virgil passed. Yeah. And and I have a really sentimental story with Virgil. So being that that's the one to me, like, like I'm not really an AJ1 person like that. I like them, mm -hmm. but that's not my go-to shoe. Yeah. Air Forces are. So that's why I pulled the trigger on that. But my story and why it's sentimental, why I didn't mind spending that much money was when ComplexCon had first hit in um in in, uh, in Long Beach. I think it was the second one. Two, yep. 
It was I was the there. One. We were both okay. there. It was the second one, and they had that Nike setup in the middle. Mm-hmm. The and, Nike 100. And you were able to dye the shoes, yep. the Air Force Ones. We were there that morning together. See what and I'm we saying? were talking to Virgil together. Actually, I think at the same time, we so, were both together. So people happen. So when I walked in, I had a pair of the original 1090s. Okay. And I brought them with me. And I went over to the Nike booth, and I was like, yo, we are, and I was with a couple of Nike people, because at that time, that's when we were doing collabs. Mm-hmm. And they were treating me, you know, nice and all, whatever. And I was like, yo, could you die these for me? And they were like, no. We're only dying Air Force Ones. Right. It's like, hi. So boom. And some girl comes over, and she's like, I like what you do with the breast cancer shoe. I'll die them for you. Okay. And she died for me. Okay. So boom. So they said, come back in like three hours or whatever, because they got to dry. They hang dry in them and mm-hmm, all. Mm-hmm. So I walked back over, and there's Virgil mm-hmm. holding the shoes. And he's like this. Taking the pictures, mm-hmm. shooting a video, mm-hmm. and I walk up, and and yo, he was very humble. Like he was a humble guy. I walked up to him, and I was just like, "Yo, like, wow, what's up, Virg? Like, mm-hmm. how are you? Mm-hmm. Hey, man, how you doing?" And I'm like, "Yo, these are crazy." And he's like, "Yeah, like these are like, yeah, like I like this color." And I'm like, "Can I have my shoes?" <laughs> and he's like, "What do you mean?" And I'm like, "Go to the mine." He's like, "Word." I'm like, "Yeah." And he's like, "What are they?" And I'm like, "They're your shoes." Died. Right. He's like, yo, you got that. Right. And he's like, you mind if I take a picture? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Not of me, but of the shoe. Yeah, right, I'm like, right. bro. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's your so shoe. then I go to him, I go, you mind if I take a picture? Right, right. And he's like, go ahead. Right. So we we take a picture with him. He starts video, we start videoing it. And then he's like, yo, what's your name? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Suraj. He's like, how you spell that? I'm like, S U R A J. And he's like, boom, Air Suraj. Mm-hmm. Virgil was here. And he signed them just like he signed the celebrity pictures. Right, 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 right. And like, yo, like, the next day, I didn't post it yet. Yet. I did post, but not yet. The internet got it or somebody was watching it. And everybody was saying that that was the next, that was the next 90. Jeez. And like, we had to go back and tell people like, no, it's not. Like, that was just a die pair. Right. But the internet for a minute was buzzing trying to figure out what this pair was, who was going to have it, but it wasn't. It was my pair. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, I wouldn't mind, I don't mind paying 2100 for something from him because, I like, I met him and I've met a lot of celebrities in my life, but he was he was authentic. He was humble mm-hmm. and it was cool because mm-hmm. a lot of people, you know, they're not that cool. So, like, I have no problem doing that because just just off of that, that one that one incident with him. That is so funny. Because we were there. I have we were my, there. Yeah, I have my horror story from that. Mine was a horror story. Okay. So I met him, talked to him. And then they were like, hey, do you want to get the Air Force One? Because they were dropping off yep. Complex the, Counter mm-hmm, Air Force One. Yeah, I didn't get it. Don't talk about it. <laughs> That's my horror story. Oh, okay, see, I didn't get it either. <laughs> like, I, we like, literally no, could have... Remember? Met we were there pic- that- I met the guy. He took pictures with my shoe, but I couldn't buy the shoe. But we were there in the... Uh, you sh- sh- well, I remember. Okay, so they were like, hey, do you want to buy the shoe early? Uh, you can get it now. I wasn't next to you when they said that. Okay. So, I don't know. I was with somebody at Nike. They're like, you want to get it now? I'm like, okay. Uh, I think I'm going to wait. I'm going to hop in this line over here for the Air Max 97, the undefeated, undefeated. ones, because those was crazy yeah, at the time. Yeah. I was like, cra- I'll come back and get the, I'll come back and get the white. It's a white Air Force yeah, One. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what you're doing. Go over there. They break the wall down. And there was no cause release. Cause the riot. No release. I come back. I'm like, hey, can I get those forces? Now everybody in Russia yep, over there. Yeah, because that's it. The 97s were gone. Yep. So everybody was on the, on the So Air now they're one. like, uh, you can't no, cut all the right people. Now. Not right now. Maybe if there's some left later. By yeah, then they're there gone. There was none left. So. Yeah. All right. And then RIP Kobe, he pulls up. Yeah. And then Kendrick I remember that because Kobe was sitting on that thing. Yep. Vic was there Inside at the time the too, because little... Vic was wearing his um his his mids that they did for him with the mm-hmm. straps. Mm-hmm. Yep, that was yeah. that was the golden era of a complex time. time. Yeah, that yeah. was crazy. Well, I mean, I mean, no, I mean for us the golden era is when we released the mom shoe there. Well, yeah, and we had the boots, so we had some time. That was you know, listen, like I said again, not trying to be funny. Sneaker room, one door, one store, mm-hmm. one team, twenty two shoes, complex con release, national. Just saying. The little engine that could, could. It's like we are here. Just saying it. Just, <laughs> just throwing a little bit out, you know, just some knowledge about it. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, what's I'll the next that. question all you right. ask everybody? Next question. What is the greatest shoe of all time? Damn, that's a hard question. No, it's not. White on white Air Force One. Oh, okay. I didn't say they're the most comfortable shoe. Just throwing it out it there is, for a minute. It is a But goat. it's the most, it's yeah, listen, man. 82, baby. Yeah. 82. That's okay. it. That's it. Like it still is relevant. It's still there. It still sells. Mm-hmm. It's changed. It's had multiple colors. I mean, you got a pair right there. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's 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 that that to me, that's the shoe. I'm yeah. sorry. Like I know a lot of people are gonna say the AJ one, mm-hmm. 
But again, like or the Elevens, I heard the Elevens too. But too. the Air Force ones to me, bro, it's the most iconic shoe. It's the shoe that you could wear with everything. It, it's it's. I mean, listen, a business was built off of that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's. I they mean, a business was built. Units. No, but a business was built off of the AJ one too. Let's yeah. throw it out there. Yeah. But it's Air Force one. That's yeah. that's me. Okay. okay. Next. If you could have one shoe for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, man. So I kind of would say the white on white Air Force One, but mm -hmm. now that I'm getting older. I would just want a white on white color code one 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 or Merrill Five. Like, <laughs> Why are you like, saying like, like I gotta I gotta five. change it because because people are gonna say yo you're crazy you picked the Merrill Five for the one shoe forever but I'm like I just need it color code one 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 because it has to be white because it has to match everything right 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 but it's gonna be the most comfortable shoes so my feet ain't gonna hurt like I'm gonna be walking on clouds for the rest of my life so yeah I might not be as cool as everybody yes I want to wear a Vomero for the rest of my life all right matter of fact I'm gonna be honest with you all right wait Vomero maybe. It might be a P6000 because they're comfortable. I'm wearing them today. So it's something in that running comfy level. That's okay. it, okay? I like that. Uh, I like that. All right. So that's the final thing. What would be the final statement you would say to your 16-year-old self or the young person out there that's listening? Do everything the same exact way that I did it. Don't make a change. Mm -hmm. Don't change nothing. Don't like, cause you're going back and telling this person what they should do from 16 to change whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Follow the path. That's it. I'm not going to tell you a, a trick. I'm not going to tell you a cheat code. I'm not going to tell you back then to care about life and cherish life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you to do everything the same because I truly believe that we're put on this earth for a purpose. And the good, the bad, we find the purpose. Like, if my mom, if I didn't lose my brother, all jokes aside, I don't think my oldest son would have been born. Because when he went, that's what I was missing when I lost my brother. I was missing my brother. And the worst thing I've ever seen in life was, and it goes back to your mom, is when a parent loses a child. Mm -hmm. The circle of life is turned. My mom was distraught. You know what I'm saying? No, no parent should have to bury their child. Mm -hmm. So my son being born only came because my brother passed away and we needed another life. Mm -hmm. We needed to be, you know, circulated, the life to come back. Then my wife getting sick, even though as horrific as it was, there was a purpose because I got the time off with my mom. Mm -hmm. My mom passing away as horrific and as much as it still hurts, I needed that to happen. Otherwise the store don't happen. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If the store doesn't happen, then the stuff and the stories of my dad doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And then as much as it hurts, and, it, and I'm telling you it hurts still, like a year later, if my dad doesn't pass away last year, I don't start like really, really, really understanding life mm -hmm. to how precious it is. Because I was with him Friday night with my family, having beers at the racetrack and he had dinner at my house and he was gone 18 hours later. Mm -hmm. So like, don't change it because everybody's going to go back and say, change this, do this, because they want to have all the success without the faults, right. without the losses. Same thing with business. I had a partner. I don't have a partner. Don't change it. Just right. do it. Because I think that's the main thing because what do I want to do? Go back and turn the clock and say, do this so I have more money or I have a bigger house or I feel more successful? Mm -hmm. Keyword, feel more successful. Right. No, bro. Like My success is every day I see my wife and kids. Every day I go see my, my store, my family that's in my store, and my successes, talking to you, talking to everybody, don't change shit. Like, we, ten, we, we tend to have so many regrets in life, and we tend to think that that's going to make it better. Like, you go, oh, if I could change this, it would be, but why do we want it better? Because who knows if what we think is better is really better. Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'd give anything right now to have my mom back, to have my dad back, to have my brother back. But I don't know if my life is better because they're back or is my life better because they're gone and I grew. Mm -hmm. It's it's a rough one, man. That's a rough one. And that's a that's a phenomenal question. But the answer to it is, Siraj, you're 16. You think the world is against you. You don't have money right now. You're still doing stupid shit, right? Just follow the path that you're still on because it didn't turn out that bad. There's a lot of hurt down the line and there's a lot of a lot of a lot of sadness and a lot of grief, but it, it it'll it'll get better eventually, but it's it's still better. Mm -hmm.
Damn, dude, you made me cry. I said I wasn't gonna cry on the last question, man. Like you good, bro? That's, that's phenomenal, bro. You good, bro? Yeah. All right. All right. So, he, he did it. <laughs> he did it. All right, go ahead, Dave. <laughs> Tell the people where they can find you. Uh, we'll have everything linked down yeah, below. Yeah, listen, well. man. Sneaker room at sneaker room. You know, spelled out the word sneaker and the word room. So there's two R's in the middle. <laughs> the other Instagram is at the T H E real R E A L Suraj S U R A J two hundred one because we from Jersey, not New York. Get that crate. Get that right. <laughs> Um, I got then, it fixed. Okay. I got it fixed. And then, and then at Sneaker Room Foundation, which that's we're just starting to build now because the nonprofit has been it's been up and running for like four years. Okay. But we're finally starting to take it serious because the other thing about it is, is like running a foundation and a business and a family. Shit's hard. Yeah. Like it's a lot of stuff going on, man. Shit's hard. Like you know, oh, like you start you start doing it, but that's how you get us. Um, D, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for inviting me to your studio, to doing this interview, to being on the show to letting me tell my story and letting it not be fully about sneakers. Yeah. Like, that's what I just want people to know. Like, and, and hopefully like, as you go further in your career, which I, I see a very bright future and I wish you all the luck and I'm always here to support you. Truthfully being the show DNA is a dope name for one reason. Mm -hmm. It's not some bullshit about the sneaker podcast the what's hot podcast, the <laughs> doom, sh you know, whatever. It yeah. doesn't even have the word sneaker in it. Right. You are, changing the game because you want to talk about what's really from the start to finish of who it is. I didn't, I've seen it before and I've watched it, but I never really thought about it too deep. Mm -hmm. Like this was real. Like, you know, like this is real. Like, like somebody needs to put this on TV. I like, I'm, keep, it. No, I'm, a, I'm genuine about it because like, bro, like who's really talking about real shit. Mm -hmm. Everybody just wants to talk about, Oh, I got this $10,000 shoe. No right. man. I, right. Like cool. Like if you got that 10,000, God bless you, but I don't want right. to talk about that. Right. right. No, this, this was fun, man. And, and, I'm gonna hold you. Hit me like in November. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about January. I'll come back out. I'll spend a couple of days. Now that now that you offer me a free Airbnb, Airbnb it's even better because that's a thousand dollars already off the, <laughs> right, off the trip. Right. Save I some still gotta pay for the airfare, Save but we're good. Bread. But no, I I think genuinely like we should talk and we should do something. Maybe even if you want to do something like around February because that's my birthday. Okay. I would. I don't celebrate it like I told you. Okay. But maybe we could celebrate it together by doing something for the kids here. Okay. And I, I like whatever it is. I don't care when it is. I, I just really want to do something out here with you Dope. because I just think that. You're a young individual that's younger than me, but I see it. Like, I see that you, you, listen, when someone's already doing so much and they're like a philanthropist and they're trying to give back, right? They see others and I can know when someone's bullshitting. Right. Just like when I talk to somebody, they know when I'm bullshitting. Right, right, right. Like, they'll right. be like, yo, Siraj, you ain't really do that shit. No, right. I really did. Yeah. You're there. I appreciate you're there. it. The fact that you even asked how to do shit, we're there. We're there. <laughs> so, right. This is a DNA show where they don't have, they don't have <laughs> tissues for you, but they make you cry. <laughs> Um, they, 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 you know, you a tough guy with tattoos and all that stuff and they break you down. Okay. They break you down. He broke me down. All right. Hit the subscribe button. Download the app. I don't know what it's called on these podcast things. I'll see you guys another one. We out. Peace.